Hey guys, I've got another project to show you. People seemed to like the Halloween one that I did a lot, so I thought it would be fun to do a Christmas themed one and hopefully give you enough time to actually make one if you wanted to. I remember when I was a kid, counting down the days till Christmas was always a huge deal in my house. I remember making big chains out of paper, advent calendars, all that kind of thing. So what I've come up with is a 3D printed Arduino powered Christmas ornament that keeps track of time and when you push a button on the side of it, It'll tell you how many days are left until Christmas. So pretty simple, but there's some pretty cool stuff going on inside here that you could use in all kinds of different projects. I've had this on my tree for a couple of days now and my kids are already having a lot of fun with it, so I thought I'd show you guys how to make one. So here are the parts that I used, and if you look in the description there should be a link to a blog post. I'll have a list of all these parts. So I've got a 500 milliamp hour battery from Adafruit. There are probably other brands that you can use as well. You'll just have to be aware of the measurements and make sure that they're pretty close to this. An Atmega 32U4 based Arduino board. Really cheap, you can get them on Amazon for 20 bucks for a pack of three of them. Really versatile, useful board for all kinds of different projects. I've got a Micro LiPo also from Adafruit for charging the battery. And if you're wondering why I didn't use the cheaper charging board that I used in the latest version of the Minty Pie, this one charges at a rate of one amp and you don't have any option to lower that. And a good rule of thumb for lithium polymer batteries is you should only charge them at a rate equal to or less than the capacity of the battery itself. This is 500 milliamps, so we really should be charging it at 500 milliamps or less. The Micro LiPo from Adafruit charges at 100 milliamps by default, but then I bridged these pads here to let it charge at 500 milliamps, which is perfect. I've got a Charlie Wing, also from Adafruit. This is meant to be used with their Feather line of products. This one, you don't have to use it with their boards, but it's basically just a 15 by seven grid of surface mount LEDs. And you can connect to it with just these two pins down here and then power it with these two pins up here. And they've even got a library for drawing things to it, like text and lines and shapes and things like that. Perfect for a project like this. And you can get them in different colors too. We've got a real-time clock module. This one is based off of the DS3231 chip. So if you get one that uses that chip, you should be able to use that without making any modifications to the Arduino code that's linked to in the blog post. I've got two different transistors. This one is an NPN transistor and this one is a PNP transistor. We'll be using these for powering it on and off when you press a button. A resistor, the value doesn't matter too much. Doesn't need to be very high though. This one's only 22 ohms. A tactile switch and then of course the 3D printed snowflake. I found a design for a snowflake online and then I modified it to add this enclosure on the back and all the pieces just kind of slide and snap into place. So you don't need any glue or screws or anything like that and it's really fast to put together. I'll put the STL files in the blog post, but if you don't have access to a 3D printer and you still want to make this, it probably wouldn't be very hard to take all this and put it together and then shove it inside something like a clear plastic ball ornament that you could probably find at a hobby store or something like that. So a good place to start is the real-time clock. When you use an Arduino, it doesn't know what time it is, and even if you tell it what time it is, it's gonna forget as soon as you cut the power to it. What a real-time clock module does is you set the time on it, and then it keeps track of that time using the battery. And in this particular one, it recharges the battery whenever it has power. It communicates over the I squared C interface, which is the same thing that our grid of LEDs uses. It's just a method of interfacing with a master device or our Arduino using only two wires. So we've got SCL for clock and SDA for data. Then we've got VCC and ground. And on this particular module, those pins are actually mirrored here on the other side, along with a couple of other pins that we're not gonna use. So to get this ready, we have to tell it what time it is right now. There's a second Arduino sketch that I'll have linked to in the blog post. That's one that you'll have to open up, change one string in it, telling it what time it is at the time that you actually run this sketch, and then flash it to your Arduino so that it can tell this thing what time it is currently. Easiest way to do this is using a breadboard. And like I mentioned, these particular boards come in packs of three or even five. And so I've got one of those that I attached header pins to so that I can easily use it on a breadboard with things like this. Okay, so I've got the VCC pin on the real-time clock module connected to the VCC pin on my Arduino. Same thing with ground. Then I've got my SDA pin, which is the yellow wire here, connected to pin two, and then the SCK pin connected to pin three. Now, if you're using a different Arduino board, 
these pins may be different for you. So you want to look up on your particular board how to use the I squared C interface. But for this board and SparkFun Pro Micro, you can use pins two and three for SDA and SCK respectively. So now we can just plug this into our computer and flash that sketch that I mentioned to it after modifying it for the current time. Now if everything's hooked up correctly, then you should be able to open up your serial monitor in the Arduino IDE and you'll be able to see it spitting out every couple of seconds what the current time is. And if all that looks good, then you can go ahead and unplug your Arduino, remove the real-time clock module so that we don't accidentally power this up and reset the time on this again, and then our real-time clock is ready to use. So now go ahead and flash the second Arduino sketch, which is the one that we'll actually be using, and we can get started wiring everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these header pins, and the easiest way that I found to remove these is to snip the black plastic between each pin, and then you'll be able to pull them out one at a time by heating up the solder on the other side. So on the bottom left here, I've got my power input, uh, positive and ground, and then I've got my data input on the top right. SDA is on the right, and SCK is on the left. All right, so these two middle pins here are ground, and you'll notice I connected two wires to each of them. And then the top one is our positive, or our battery connection, and I've also got two wires going into that one. So on the Arduino itself, I've got a ground wire from our battery charging board going into the Arduino. And then I've also got the ground wire from our RTC connected to the same ground pin. Then I've got the VCC pin from the RTC connected to VCC on the Arduino. And I've got an extra wire attached to that, which we'll get to here in a minute. Got my SDA pin on pin two and SCL on three for the I squared C bus. That'll be talking to our grid of LEDs and the RTC. And then I've got another wire attached to pin six. You'll notice though that the Arduino itself isn't actually hooked up to power. That's where these transistors that I mentioned earlier come in. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite parts of this project. What we're gonna do is use these to make it so that when we push the button, we'll be connected to power and it'll boot up, but then it'll keep itself on using these and one of the output pins on the Arduino. Then when it's done doing its thing, it'll disconnect itself from power, completely shutting it off. So we don't need a power switch. You don't need to hold the button down while it's on doing its thing. You can just tap the button, it'll boot up, display what it needs to on the screen, and then shut itself completely out. A transistor is essentially a solid state switch, meaning that there's nothing mechanical about it. And each transistor has a collector, a base, and an emitter pin. On these particular ones, the middle pin is the base pin. And so you connect the base pin to either ground or a positive voltage, and that will control the flow of current going through the two outer pins. The order of the pins might be different depending on what transistors you use but on this one, the middle one is the base pin. And so this is an NPN transistor, and this is a PNP transistor. For the NPN one, the base pin, you connect to a positive voltage, and the outer ones will have connected to our ground wire. And for the PNP, it's the opposite. The middle pin, we're gonna connect to ground, which will allow current to flow through the outer pins. Okay, so let me explain again how this is working. When I push this button, which is connected to ground, it connects this transistor, which is a PNP transistor, to ground, thus switching it on. It looks a, a little weird because I have this wire actually connected to this leg of this other transistor and then connected to this, but it's just the same as if I had it connected directly. But that's what's happening here is push this button and this middle leg is connected to ground. When that happens, current is allowed to flow through here into the Arduino, turning it on. Right when it turns on, it sets pin number six to high, which turns on this other transistor. When that happens, the connection is made inside of it, which connects another ground wire on the power board to the middle pin on this transistor, which will keep it on. 
So the Arduino does its thing and then after it's done, it sets this pin back to low, which switches this off and cuts power to the whole thing. Pretty cool. I did make one mistake earlier that you may have noticed. I had the screen powered directly off of the battery charging board. If you do that, the screen will always be drawing a little bit of power. So I went ahead and connected it to the same VCC pad on the real time clock. So now we can connect our battery. And if you watch the power LED on the real time clock, you'll see that it powers up when I press the button. Arduino does its thing and it shuts off. So now that we know everything works, we can go ahead and put all this inside of our project box, which in my case is a 3D printed snowflake. Well, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you plan on making one of these yourself or using some of the ideas and concepts in it on another project, let me know in the comments or stop by the forums where you can show off your projects to other makers. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.